Hello everyone and welcome to the book and the drink. I hope you're being safe out there because as I'm recording this, it is April 2020 and there is a pandemic going on. There is a coronavirus that's terrorizing the world and governments and medical officials are telling everyone to shelter in place and practice social distancing, which just means staying away from other people and basically staying in the house and not going out unless absolutely necessary. Me, I've been doing my part and staying home as much as possible, having a few cocktails so I don't go insane, and reading some good books. And I think you should consider it also. Why not start with this masterpiece from Haruki Murakami. All right, well, let's go out here and pick us a Meyer lemon for our drink. I think there are a few left on the tree, but let's just go and check. Bingo. I first discovered this book as I was doing Google and Amazon searches, looking for another fantasy novel to read, and it kept coming up on my search results. And well, I kept dismissing it because fantasy book covers don't look like this. They're not stark white, they don't have a giant face on it, and they don't have IQ84 as a title, which is how I read this the first few times that I saw it. It wasn't until later that I realized it was 1Q84, and the Q is just a play on words in Japanese. The pronunciation Q means 9 in Japanese, and so it's really 1984. I kept dismissing it because this isn't what I was looking for. Fantasy covers don't look like this. They look like this and have titles like Dragons of a Fallen Sun or like this and titles like The Way of Kings, review for which coming soon. So subscribe if you want to see that. It wasn't until a few months later that I was at my local used bookstore that I saw this cover once again on the shelf staring at me and I decided to pick it up and maybe read a couple pages. I was somewhat worried that this is a translation from the original Japanese and translations don't always come across perfectly into English. Uh, but to my surprise, I picked it up and read the first couple pages and the writing was just superb and I loved it. So I picked it up uh, at a good discount, brought it home and I have not regretted my decision this drink, by the way, I call it Moons Over Tokyo. It's a playoff of a traditional drink called Moon Over Manhattan, but I've replaced the wine from that original drink to sake. And I'll show you how to make this at the end of the video. It's quite delicious. And if you've read the book, then you would recognize that we have a pearl onion here and the smaller olive, and you know what those things represent. And it's quite delicious. So is this really a fantasy novel? as it kept coming up in my search results? Well, not in the traditional Tolkienese sense of having wizards and dragons and elves in a made up world. This takes place in 1984 Japan, and there are some fantastical elements tied into it. Um, some of them are actually pretty big in the plot, but I wouldn't consider this fantasy really. Uh, maybe fantasy adjacent or fantasy curious as the kids are saying nowadays. Stop saying that, kids. So what is it about this book that made me want to recommend it to you guys? Well, what's really impressive here is that the writing was a translation from the original Japanese, and that makes it so, so impressive that the prose comes across so well. And the prose here is what keeps you turning the pages, page after page after page after page, and this thick boy, this over 1,100-page uh, book will fly by and you'll wish you had more pages to read at the end of it. It is written that well. Now, what do I mean by a good prose? Because that has different definitions to different people. For me, a good prose is one that is enjoyable to read, first and foremost. And then secondly, tells me the story without me trying to guess what's going on in the scene or within a conversation. That is done really well here. Some books and authors, they try to kind of hold things back so you have to guess and try to kind of translate or figure out what's going on. And I really dislike that. 
This is a storybook after all, and the author is a storyteller. So tell me a story and tell it in a way that is enjoyable and make me understand what your story is about. And this does that perfectly. The second thing about this book that is really outstanding is the characters and the character development. There are two main characters that we flip back and forth between chapter after chapter for the most part of the book. The way that they are described and the history that they are given and the way that Murakami puts you in their head and shows you their thought processes really brings them to life like no other characters that I've seen. About a third of the way through this book, which I know is quite a bit, but once you get to that point, you feel like you kind of know these characters as you would real people in the real world. You could probably predict how they would act in a given situation or how they would respond in a conversation. And to be able to do that so effectively and so well is quite remarkable. And the last thing, well, I shouldn't say last thing. There are so many things that make this book great, but of the three main things that make it amazing, the third one is the plot, plot development and the intertwining of the plots. I talked about how there were two characters that you follow for most of the book and they seem to have disparate um, plots going on. It is amazing how Murakami kind of slowly introduces bit by bit some of the things consciously, some of them unconsciously, some of them perhaps by chance, some foreshadowing here. It all kind of weaves together and comes together to essentially bring those two disparate stories into one overall narrative. And it's just done beautifully and makes it so enjoyable to see that happen in real time. So what else can you expect from this big tome of a book? Well, within these pages are a variety of things, and this is really spoiler free for the most part, but you can expect murder. You can expect uh, the cult and sex of a variety of types, dead goats and ears. Once you read a Murakami book, you'll never look at ears the same way. But great book and I highly, highly recommend. Now, let's go to the bar and I'll show you how to make a Moons Over Tokyo. The first thing we're going to need in order to concoct our delicious cocktail is, of course, a glass with some ice in it. From there, we're going to grab the zest of some sort of citrus, either a lemon or an orange. Here, I'm using a Meyer lemon that I picked from the tree outside. And we'll go ahead and take a nice big chunk of zest from that. And all we're really going to do is get some of these essential oils that exist in the skin and, and just rub it on the edge of the glass. From there, we're gonna go ahead and mix our cocktail. The first thing we're gonna need is good old Kentucky bourbon. And I'm using Bullet, but go ahead and feel free to use any brand that you like. We're gonna go ahead and take three quarters of an ounce of the bourbon. And that's gonna go right into our shaker, which already has ice in it. And to that, we're going to add a half ounce of simple syrup, which is just a mixture of sugar and water in equal parts. And put that right in. And then the last thing that we'll need, and this is what sets this drink apart and makes it a Tokyo instead of a Manhattan type drink, and that's going to be some sake. Uh, this is a Jun Mai type sake, but go ahead and feel free to use any kind of filter sake that tastes good to you. And we'll go ahead and put two ounces of the sake in here. And just add that to the shaker as well. And then we just put the lid on and shake it. Shake it for about 20 seconds or so or until it's well chilled. I think that's good. And then we'll go ahead and put it over the ice. And to garnish, we're going to take a pearl onion, which represents the moon, and then a smaller 
olive, which represents, well, if you've read the book, you know what it represents. If you haven't, go ahead and read the book and come back and watch this again. And here it is, uh, Moons Over Tokyo, a delicious cocktail, which I know you're going to enjoy, and one that's thematically appropriate for our book and also delicious. Until next time, cheers.